So we are in the middle of a mm. we are in the middle of a question about clean and unclean on the ark. And you think the ark uh, type Christ? Uh, I think it. I, I could be wrong. I'm just. I, I see salvation. I see that God provided a means of salvation, and the ark would be that saving vehicle, the saving that saved them. And so I'm seeing Christ. And whether I've heard that talked or somebody, I, but that's the picture that's in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad. It's not a bad picture, because the ark does type Christ in the same way that the Ark of the Covenant types Christ. It is the exact same word. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So yes, but they are both physical, mm -hmm. and they will both fail Represent in that example. Mm -hmm. Because when Christ comes, you're talking about this Bible is truth, mm -hmm. he stands up and he says, I am truth. Mm -hmm. And he can say that because he is the Word. Mm -hmm. But the Word, although it prophesies him, cannot typify him. There is nothing in the written Word that approaches the transcendent truth that Christ brings by the outraying of his Father's glory, power, majesty, creativity. That's why he is so singular. So in a sense of all types of things, what is it? Gone. Yes, and it, it doesn't. It, it, they are physically gone, and they are no longer. They are an example. They are an admonition. They are not a goal. Paul tells us all of this was written for our example, our mm -hmm. admonition, and the admonition is a loving warning. In 120 years, they got a loving warning before that flood, and so th that does that does type that. But as in actuality, when the ark comes back to rest, it is still back on a cursed earth. You see why it fails? Because when Christ lifts his people off, they're not coming back to a cursed earth. So is the ark and the ark of the covenant the same word? It is exactly the same word. And so it's the same word as a basket that Moses was in. <laughs> yes. I hope not. Yep. Yeah. Which reminds us that... God is perfected in sevens, but he's worshipped in threes without being three. I think they can all turn down. Any other questions as we go? As no. we... Really? I'm sure. Gee, I didn't realize Sorry. it. I've me all week. 800 <laughs> comedians out of work, and I've got you laughing. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> you bugged me all week, Jay. Throw that little gem in there. <laughs> it bugged you all week, has it? Yeah. Did you look up the word unclean? Yeah, I did that in the dictionary, two weeks ago. In the American dictionary or in Hebrew? <coughs> huh? In Hebrew? No, I, in the Bible dictionary okay. I did. Jay. What did it tell you? Uh, Jay, that Not was clean. two weeks ago. Huh? <laughs> what, Bill? Not clean. Yeah, not clean. <laughs> Pretty much. Where did I put that? You're right. Now, the same God that makes the distinction between the clean and the unclean animals it's about ready to declare distinctions between people. Between oh, people. people. And I put it. most Bible expositors, commentators will tell you that in this 10th chapter of Genesis, that God begins to turn his emphasis and his plan toward the family of Shem's descendants. And as we look at that, I would suggest that we also look at James 1.17, because I, I don't agree with that. I respectfully disagree. James, who grew up with our Lord, probably his next younger uh, stepbrother, for every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of the lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is not turning his attention. Now, remember that this God of creation, this God who came down and spoke with Adam, who dealt with Adam's sin, who dealt with the expulsion or the expulsion from Eden, sees what we see as everything that has happened, 
everything that is happening and everything that will happen, he sees it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen that's going to change his mind? What's, what, what is it that he doesn't foresee that says, well, now I've got to do it this way? Mm -hmm. No, uh, even when it comes to that, uh, that very singular sacrifice, <coughs> we oh, know about the nails, we know about the Romans' involvement, we know about Caiaphas, we know about Anaphas, but the Bible says he was delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Nothing was changed. God is not... He's not backing up. He's not deviating. What he's doing is he's turning our attention to what he has planned all along. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing here. Now, up until, well, it, I would suggest that's what he's doing here. In chapter 10, we have descendants of Noah, and we have another one of those Tolodos. This is the generations of the sons of Noah. Mm -hmm. And they tell us who they are. And they are, and we're going to get a hint here. Um, let me see here. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, in verse 5 of chapter 10, after you have the sons of Noah by way of Japheth, starting with Gomer and Magog and mm -hmm. all the rest of that, and then it says, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Right? Mm -hmm. We all understand those words. Now understand this. There is no tribe yet. There is no family yet. There is no nation yet. And Moses is speaking of it in the past tense because when Moses comes along to write the book, this has already occurred. Mm -hmm. So what you have in chapter 10 is you have the what? What? The what and the who. And in chapter 11, you have the why. Now, you remember how I told you when you look at, um, uh, at Jewish literature, you look at it in a series of overlapping arcs. Look at this as the first arc. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them uh, were sons born after the flood. So you don't have any of Noah's immediate descendants other than his three sons that are, are pre-flood. They're all post-flood generations. That's who we come from, our post-flood generations. Uh, those three boys and their wives, and Noah's wife, of course, and himself are pre flood, but they are the last of that. And they're all one family, it's not plural. Okay? Right. Noah's, Noah's, Noah's family. But we're, now, when you see the isles of the Gentiles, we're not talking about islands, you're talking about the distant lands of the Gentiles. Where are you? Uh, verse 5. Yeah, well, I, I don't have... I, By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, mm -hmm. after their families, and in their nation. So when you see that, <clears throat> the word isles, don't look at it as so this is islands in the Mediterranean. Or, I just have coastland no, it means people. the distant lands, and they're simply not enumerated at this point. What? They are about to be. Yeah. Okay? Now, how important is it to us that we see this genealogy? That we what? That we see this genealogy. What does it mean to us? It's here for a reason. What do you suppose the reason might be? At that time, to the to the back when Moses wrote it, he would be writing it to point them forward to see forward. Now we're here in the forward view, if you will, looking back. Right. We are looking back, but we also have a future to look. And it begins here. Paul calls Christ the last Adam. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work unless he can prove a legal descent from Adam. Oh, I see. And Luke's uh, gospel and the genealogy that he gives us takes Christ all the way back to Adam. Okay? There who? Luke, Luke's, Luke's Gospel. And it's in Luke's Gospel where it refers to Adam as the Son of God. The first Adam as the Son of God. So we have a fallen Son of God and his descendants by way of Noah, one man, perfect in his generations, he goes all the way back mm -hmm. to Adam. Didn't know him. Two of the 
pre-flood patriarchs that Noah would not have known Adam and Enoch. He, would, he could have known all the others, but not those two. Adam's already dead. Enoch is already translated before Noah is born. But he would have known all the others. <coughs> could have known all the others. So the genealogy that's given is not a family tree to Noah. It's a family reunion that can never happen again because they did not come on the ark. Had every opportunity, every chance. Now the pre-flood patriarchs of Noah's, of what we refer to as the godly line, by the time the flood descends, Noah's the last living one. Uh, his uh, grandfather, Methuselah, <laughs> dies the year of the flood, perhaps even the day of the flood. Um, Lamech, his father, is already had, had, had predeceased uh, Methuselah, and Methuselah is the last living of the line. So of the line that you're seeing prior to Noah, going back to Adam, they're dead. The, the flood does not touch them, but it touches every one of their <coughs> siblings. And they're all siblings at that point. Now there's a couple of things I want to point out here. <coughs> we have already in, uh, uh, in, in chapter 9 the curse that is placed on Canaan. Now I want you to watch the development of these families. Now that's the first time this word is used. Families, plural. So we know that we're going to go beyond Noah's uh, a personal and effective influence as time goes on. So there's going to be more than one family. But there will always be only one chosen line. Hmm. Now it's going to vest eventually in Abraham. But that's not where it starts. That's where it's manifested and declared. As far as God's concerned, he's already chosen him. He didn't wait for Abraham to be born and go, well, you know, he's the best of this, I'll take this one. He's already chosen him, long before he was born. But in verse 6, and the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. See Canaan's name show up? Mm -hmm. <coughs> when you see these names, I want you to remember they're not only names of people, but because the earth is going to be divided by tribes, by families, and by tongues, nations, they are also place names. They are also what? Place names. These are the names of countries. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, they're going to be the names of great empires. Okay. For instance, Mizraim. Is that a familiar name to anybody? Didn't hear it. Mizraim. Ouch. In no. verse 6, son of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Flint, and Canaan. Canaan we're familiar with, and we know where that is. Right. Mm -hmm. Mizraim is Egypt. Yeah, Egypt is what I have. Egypt. As a matter of fact, it's what they have painted on the side of their airplane today. Mishraim. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> um, Kush? What? I anybody, have black anybody, Africa. <laughs> anybody have a map in front of them? Oh, yeah. No. Well, thank you. <laughs> you're going to see these names begin to show up here. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see directions of travel from where they go. Uh, as, as, for instance, um, Okay, let's go down to verse 8. And Cush begat Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Eric, and Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. That sounds like something, you know, like clues being dropped in a hearty <coughs> mystery, doesn't it? Shinar is Babylon. Shinar, the plain of Shinar is where Nebuchadnezzar erected that statue that he wanted Jadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to bow down for. Right. Got that. But look who built it. Yeah. Nimrod. Now, when it says a mighty hunter before the Lord, don't kid yourself. This is not the American sportsman, you know, having fun on the plains of Africa, uh, you know, bringing home the trophy heads and. Mm -hmm. Not this guy. Look what he does. Well, I have against the Lord. Well, that's what the four can mean. Anti, and when we when you see the, the word anti, right? Mm -hmm. It simply means face it. Hmm? Say what? It simply means face it. 
Mm. Facing. I'm facing you. Oh, facing. I'm mm. anti Frank right now. Right. I might be in agreement. I might be in disagreement. You can't tell by looking, can you? No. You can't tell by the Antichrist either. Huh. Till he speaks. Till he acts. And then by their fruit, you'll know him. Mm-hmm. Now, Nimrod, this mighty hunter, builds a city. And it's named, right? What's the name of the city? Babylon. That's the first one. Oh, Babylon. That's where Babylon comes from. It's from out, Babylon. Yeah. But we know we're going to see in the next chapter here, which we're going to jump over in just a minute, what happens at Babylon. But what was the command of God when they left the ark? What were they supposed to do? Fruitful and multiply. Exceedingly fruitful. Yeah, and go into all the earth. Okay? Nimrod says, "Mm -mm, we're going to stay right here. Right. And out of that land went forth Azure and built it. There's Nineveh. Yeah. Is that a familiar name to anybody? Mm -hmm. Who goes to Nineveh eventually? Jonah. Uh, Jonah. Jonah. Yeah. First Hebrew prophet to go to a Gentile nation is Jonah. Mm-hmm. The roots are, and the, and the reason he had to go is right here. Notice whose line he's from. Mm. Nineveh is the capital of what empire? Syrian. Yes, and they are the one. Exceedingly wicked and evil. And mm-hmm. murderous. Yes. Mm-hmm. They're the ones, they are the ones who take the uh, 12, uh, 10 northern tribes uh, captive. No, they did repent 500 years before they did that. And God spared them for a while. Yeah. And uh, told them he would, and he did. We've studied Broke this. Broke Jonah's heart, huh? We've studied this. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, okay. right? yeah. you're going to we have. We've studied this, right? You're going to study it again. <laughs> oh, this is good. <laughs> no, good. This is the minor problem. Let me exactly. Let me remind you. Mind you. <laughs> this is good. It is, just minor prophets. Mm-hmm. Now, what you're looking at are the names of people that are remembered as the names of cities, great cities. Mm-hmm. And there is one here that you don't remember, which is called a, a great city, which is Kalah. Ever hear of it? We're, we're C-A-L-A-H, and it is in verse 12. Yeah. And it was the city of Raisin between Nineveh and Kalah, the same is a great city. Oh, Kalah. Isn't there anymore? And Mizraim begat Ludum and, and, and Anamim and Lahabim and Naphtali. Verse 14, pay careful attention to verse 14. And Paphrusim and Kasluhim, out of whom came Philistim and Kaphtuhi. Tori. You have the beginning of the Philistines in yeah. verse 14. Now, and we know where Philistia is. It's the coastal plain of Israel between Gerar and um, Tyre. And it's also the land of giants, which scares the daylights out of some of the land. Not all of the giants are there, but some of them. But Philistia is that nation which never ceases to be the Lord in Israel's side. And look who he comes from. Now look. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. <coughs> Sidon is always a seaport city, you know, up the northern coast of Israel. But Heth is an interesting guy. Who? Heth. Yeah. From him you get all the Hittites. Yeah, Hittites. The Hittite kingdom comes from Heth, and Heth comes from Canaan. Now, these are minor kingdoms these ones of of Canaan, because remember Noah's curse. Canaan is never going to succeed. Right. Canaan is never going to be anything more than tributary to his two brothers. And look at what comes out of Japheth's side. Look what comes out of Shem's uh, line of things. Canaan, they're kind of in the middle, and everybody just beats the tar out. Now, whether that is because Noah's curse made that happen or Noah, as a prophet, predicted that it would happen, I'm not going to say because I don't know, but it is what happened, and it is what Noah said would happen. Now, notice also, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinai. Any of these names familiar? Sinai? Jebusites? 
Jebusite and Amorites. Yes. Jebusites are the ones who actually live in Jerusalem before the land is conquered, and it's David who goes up and just wipes them out. There's not one Jebusite descendant left alive on earth. They killed every last one of them. But these nations, these names, Jebusite, Amorite, Gergesite, Hivite, Archite, Sinite, the Arvadite, Zimmerite, the Hamathite, afterwards were the families of Canaan spread abroad. These are the nations that Israel is told you go in and kill them all. Yeah, you don't save anything from them. And you don't associate with these people. You don't take them. You don't let your sons marry their daughters. Mm -hmm. You do not let your daughters marry their sons. Mm -hmm. And the problem is by then they had devolved into such deprived and depraved false worship that God does not want them intermingling. Mm -hmm. Now, that false worship, and we're going to see in a little bit, Every false worship, every false doctrine, every lie about this word begins at Babel, where they build the first tower. We're going to see that in the next. Now, I have it that the Sinites, which are from Canada, are the Chinese. So what? Some of them will be. Chinese. So what, Mom? The Sinite, S-I-N-I-T-E. I don't know, Jay. I, when some, I did a study will, a long time be. ago, I have it. Some written. will be, and that you know uh, when we when we refer which to, I mean from Canaan. When we refer why not? to China um, generically, we refer to the Sino. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, Sino. But these also uh, <clears throat> uh, part of the Sinites also go down into the Sinai Peninsula. Oh, okay. Sinai Peninsula. Okay. Sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, after their countries, after their nations. See, it's repeated again. That, that's that's in, in verse 20. Now we're going to get down to Shem. I want you to notice what's happening here. Because we're being told flat out the plan is already in place. And unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. So we know that Japheth is Shem's older brother. And for some reason, we're told that he's the father of all the children of Eber. Mm -hmm. A very important name. From Eber, we get the word Hebrew. Mm. The first time that that word is used to describe a person, it is used of Abraham. Abraham the Hebrew. We'll get to that in a few later chapters. But it comes from Shem. And it doesn't come from Asher, and it doesn't come from Lud, and it doesn't come from Aaron. It comes from Arphaxad. And remember before when we looked that the birthright is not reckoned with the genealogy? The genealogy stands. Here you've got the birth order. But as you go down through and you look at who produces what, that blessing of birthright comes by way of Arphaxad. There's, there's the line. By way of what? Arphaxad. The uh -huh. second... Our facts at the second son, verse oh, 22. Okay. 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 I see. Okay. That was a name that yeah. I was thinking of was, yeah. Okay. Now, here's how this is going to tie together. The book we are reading is not the oldest written book in the Bible. You are aware of that. The book of Job is. Yeah, you're right. All right. We believe that Job was written sometime during the patriarchal period. But Genesis is written about the creation and everything after during the Exodus period. So it would be created by, all right? And the reason I'm saying that is the children of Aram, Uz, Ho, Ether, and Mash. See that word, Uz? Mm -hmm. Turn to yeah. the book of Job. Job. First, first chapter, first verse. And see where this man is from. Somebody read it out loud. Job 1.1. 1, 1. And remember, these family names and these individual names become place names. Well, in the land of us, there lived a man whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil, right? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that just because it is not of the messianic line, it mm -hmm. means it is ungodly. 
Oh. Here's a guy who, who, he's not Hebrew. Nobody else in the book of Job is Hebrew, mm -hmm. with the possible exception of Elihu. We don't know about Elihu. But he doesn't live there, and he doesn't speak it. And he's righteous. And it's the only person I can find in the Bible that God points to and brags on. Have you considered my servant Job? Did you get a load of Job? Now there's a guy for you. And he's telling Satan. Are, are we saying that he's not a Hebrew? He's not a Hebrew. He's not a Hebrew. He is from Shem, though, that line lineage of Shem. Yes, he is the line and lineage of Shem. Okay, but he so, is descended from Aram. Right. Okay. Not a fact check. Yeah. <clears throat> the children, okay. And Aphaxad begat Selah, and Selah begets Eber. See where the line is distinct? And okay. Eber has two, were born two sons. The name was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Jokta. Peleg means division. Means what? Division. Division, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's long division or short division. <laughs> I'm guessing short division because Jokta means little. The names do not bear bad. any resemblance That's to each really other bad. at all. But Peleg means division. And Jotun begat Almodad and Selah and Azarmaveth and Jireh. Now, don't you wish that they were named Frank and Bob and Bill and Woods <laughs> and Roy and Ralph? But they're not. Okie dokie. So let's make a jump. Verse 31 and 32. These are the sons of Shem after their families, after their times, <coughs> in their lands, after their nations, these are the families of the sons of Noah. Mm -hmm. After their generations, in their nations, by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Now that's pretty definite and pretty detailed and pretty described. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. But that is... But it says there, how does, how does your uh, 32 read at the end, Jay? At the end? At the end of the verse. Period. <laughs> After the flood. Thank you. After the flood. What does it say? But after the flood. And from these nations were divided on the earth after the flood. Mine does not say from these nations. The nations. Okay, that's what I'm Mine asking you. Yeah, okay. These are the families. And R okay. is a present tense verb in that's what I was time. See, that's the difference in this verse then, because it's having them already dividing them up. No, but it's, it's not been it's divided running ahead up of the yet. Story. See, the, your, those translators are doing a good job, but they read ahead. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. asking you. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations and by these were, now you see the past tense, the nation's divided because Moses is talking to as far as God is concerned, the only one that matters. And the plan is already laid, the purpose is already set, the purpose is redemption. Okay? And the whole earth Thanks. was the whole earth was of one language and one speech, and it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that's where the ark comes to rest. Ararat. East is always east of Jerusalem. As far as Moses and Israel is concerned, north is north of Jerusalem, south is south of Jerusalem, east is east of Jerusalem, and west is west of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the focal point. So when it says they're coming from the east, they're coming from Ararat toward the promised land, what we would call the promised land. And they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, oh, watch this. Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Now, we're not talking pond scum here for slime. This is asphalt. They're building permanently. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a what? A name. A name. Mm -hmm. Now they already have names. Now they're going to want to be famous. They want to be more famous than anybody else that's got names. And they want to be famous for what they've done. And not be scared. 
And they're not, no, they're not going to. I said because their wish was not to be scattered. Yes, and God yeah. told them to and scatter. Then, yes, that's what I'm saying. So yes. what you have is within three generations of the flood, you have the same kind of rebellion that happened in the garden. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it our way. Exactly. For our reasons. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of the men had built it. Now, isn't that interesting? Until he comes down, he's not really sure what they're up to. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The omniscient, <laughs> omnipotent God. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they all have one language, and this they begin to do. Surprise, surprise, surprise. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to. He uses their words. Go to. Let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. And so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. That was the command in the first place. Mm -hmm. They could have gone with his blessing and his empowerment and right. his enablement. And he says, you want to do things your way? Okay, fine. There's the earth. Go do it your way. You're just going to not do it for your reasons. You're going to, you know. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord there did confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them upon the face of all the earth. Now do you see why verse 32 is actually ahead of the story? And yeah. ahead of the reason for the yeah. story. Yeah. These, now, here we go. We're going to go right back. We're going to read the generations of Shem again. I thought we already had them. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old. Ooh, added information. Remember those arcs? It's not, it's not going, it's not going to uh, contradict it. It will add detail and it will add clarity. Okay, Shem was 100 years old and begat a farm set two years after the flood. And Shem lived after to be at a farm set 500 years and begat sons and daughters. Sounds a lot like the pre-flood patriarch, doesn't it? Well, he's a lot like a pre-flood patriarch because he's the last of them. Uh, say that, yeah, I was, my mind went away. And, and Shem is the last of the pre-flood patriarchs. Uh, pre-flood patriarchs. Shem is born before the flood right. and every child is after. So he has a body no. of knowledge that no one after him will have. Right. Now, just a minute. Say that again, Jay. Shem is what? Shem is born before the flood. And every child he has is born after the Oh, yes, all of them. You're right. But ja Japheth and uh, Ham are also pre-flood. Yeah, they are. And let's remember, everybody's being scattered here. Okay, that's... But we're going to focus on this guy and his family. Okay, that's... Okay, 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 okay. All right. We're not forgetting the others. No, that's... God I understand. God is not... It, God's counsel and will is not being worked through the others. It'll work with them. And there's blessings for them. Right. But they're going to come by way of Abraham or they're not going to get up. Because Abraham is the choice. And we're going to look backwards from Christ and Luke. We right. goes right back to Shem. So here we're going to here we're going to start seeing some things. And the park said lived after he oh okay, let's go back up. Uh, lived after he got Park said five hundred years and begat sons and daughters, and Arphaxad lived five and thirty years and begat Selah, and Arphaxad lived after he begat Selah four hundred and three years and begat sons and daughters, and Selah lived thirty years and begat Eber, and Selah lived after he begat Eber four hundred years. Now, you notice two things are happening here. The overall lifespan is coming down, and it's coming down rather fast. Mm -hmm. You can measure it from one generation to the, to the next. The other thing is, that the age at which the patriarch produces his firstborn, or the birthright son, is also much lower. Mm -hmm. It's going to drop from the 100 years down to 20, excuse me, 28, 29, 30, uh, 32. But those two are coming down. Twenty-nine. Now you see, aside from not understanding each other, you see what else has just been whacked? Their ability to pass information from one to the oh, other right. now 
has been divided exponentially because they're not going to live as long. Exactly. And, and, and you'll have one glaring example in that Shem himself. He will live long enough that it was possible he could have known Jacob and Esau. Oh. So look what he could have told him. He lives into that patriarchal period in which Job, you know, is written of. So when Job starts quoting about God, who do you think he gets it from? Mm -hmm. this, this is, he's been told, and he believes he's a righteous man. He offers the sacrifice, and the sacrifices are accepted. It's Abel's sacrifice he's offering. But he's not messianic, but he's not ungodly. Uh, That's huge. Rahab mm -hmm. in Jericho is not Jewish. She is not ungodly. Oh, it's not Jewish. When she let that scarlet cord down as the witness and the type of the blood that would be spilled, she's put right into the Messianic line. A heathen, an idol worshiper, and a prostitute. Right. The great, 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 great grandmother. That's weird. You know what it is? It's grace. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. what it is. Yeah. And, and you're going to be told, and we've all been told, that doesn't exist in the Old Testament. That's what oh, are you kidding me? It's not the right dispensation. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> but God yes, doesn't dispense you're right. grace, he extends it. Oh. Boy, yeah, and that was nothing but grace on that. The art oh. is grace, and the invitation exactly. is come in. But this also helps us understand three wise men from the East. Oh, absolutely. Or the wise men from the East. Babylon. I mean, we're, we're the it's not that start. they are ungodly, they're just not messianic. I have some news. They all start right, right here. Right. I have some news for anybody who hasn't been paying attention through this whole story. Every mother, son, and daughter of us is ungodly. Mm -hmm. Since the fall. Exactly. Mm -hmm. no, but nobody except by the grace, grace. of God exactly. can lay claim to sonship exactly. for as many as received him to them gave you the power mm -hmm. to become the sons of God mm -hmm. it was lost it wasn't ours exactly I mean Paul will just wrench the, the Greek language to its grammatical ultimate possibilities to show Abraham was nothing to brag about either. But he was his friend. But he, had, but he received the faith, the revelation that God had given him, and he acted, he believed, and he acted upon it. And it was counted to him for righteousness. Yeah, he was our friend. righteousness, our godliness, comes from God. It does not come from us yeah. believing that God saved us. No, it's God's from the beginning mm -hmm. to end. His choice, his people, his reasons... And, and the reason eventually becomes singular in the same way that Abraham is so singular. It is, it is not just tending, it is bending everything to his will of redemption. Hmm. Now that's a long arc. That's probably mm -hmm. the longest of the Hebrew arcs in this Bible. But it bends toward that point. And it does yeah, not yeah. swerve. Okay? Well, I think, yes. I think for you, for me what this is doing is reminding me that God is God of all people, mm -hmm. not just the Hebrews, mm -hmm. not just Abraham, not just, and I know I'm a Gentile and I'm coming in later, but it's through that Abraham, that messianic line, now down to Shem, but they all got off the ark, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Right. They all watched Noah build an altar. They all watched Noah do the right thing. Right. And when they did spread, they were monotheistic. All of them. Every single one of them. Right. And who knows what happened down through that right. that God kept faithful so that wise men showed up from the east and Rahab a harlot would do right and all of these other things. God's working in all people, even Nineveh. I mean, that's a Gentile right. city. That, well, he saved the, that as much for the cattle as he did for <laughs> but, but the thing <laughs> is, made Noah feel that we, I think we forget that this is the story of the nations, <laughs> and it's not 
evolution. It's no. not it, no. all yeah. the other things that we have been bombarded with. Mm -hmm. This goes back to the real beginning. The real beginning, and it, if there's anything that these two chapters of genealogy should show you, you ready? Until Abraham. I don't care whose family you are. There is no distinction between Jew and Gentile. Oh, yeah. yeah. There is only belief and unbelief. Does that remind yeah. you of today? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. When we come out the other side of the tent and the tabernacle and there's the cross, you can either accept or walk by it. But there's nothing beyond it. That's where the curve stops. All right? Now, I'm going to very quickly run synoptically from verse 17 to 32 in chapter 11. Starting with Eber, he begets Peleg, okay? Peleg is when the earth is divided. Peleg lives 30 years and he begets Ru. Ryu. Ryu begets Sarek. Sarek begets and begets and begets. And begets, oh, and there's Nahor. There's a name that's kind of familiar. Yeah. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah 119 years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begat, oops, Abram. Mm -hmm. Nahor and Aaron. So uh, Terah's second son, Nahor, is named for Terah's father. Don't mix those two names up. There's two, there's, there's a generation between those two names. One's named for his grandfather, and Aaron. These are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Aaron, and Aaron begat Lot. So we know that Lot is, before uh, we ever get to that story, that Lot is Abraham's nephew. Right. Right? And Aaron died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees, and Abraham and Nahor took them wives, and so forth and so on. Sarah was barren, she had no child in verse 30. Now watch verse 31. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Aaron his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, and his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur to the, uh, of, the, uh, of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan, and they came unto Aaron and dwelt there. Did you notice the name Aaron is in the line? And he, he, is, you know, he is the son of um, Nahor. So when Abraham's father, Terah, gets to where he wants to go, which is up at the very top of that first crescent, he names it for his son. Aaron is the town eventually that Jacob will go back to to achieve his wife. Rachel. These names become place names. And by them, the earth is not only divided, it is remembered. We find our origins, we find our perspectives, and whether we're east of it, west of it, north, south of it, sooner, later, we come back to the, these, these are reference points. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died mm -hmm. in Aaron. Okay, that's going to be the end of chapter 11. We're going to take up next week the story of Abraham, and you're going to see types. If you like types, you're going to see them just blossom from there on out. But remember, yeah. it's the scattering started by the intervention of God because of the blasphemy of Babel. That's what it was. It was blasphemy. That's all false worship is. Organized, we're, we're told, you know, it, uh, all good Protestants are told it starts with Rome. All over Rome is in the patch. <laughs> you know, and Babylon and all of everything that comes out of that. Even our, even our term Easter comes from Babylon. Are you aware of that? Yes. Yep. Okay. Just so long as we so you know. Any questions, comments, gripes, complaints? Oh, yeah. Well, I Jay, feel, I, I think that you... Yeah, there's a hand behind you, Linda. Just do it. I'll get what to you. What you're doing is solidifying in my mind the plan of redemption was already done, put together before all of this happened in the Right along Absolutely. Before the foundation of the world. Before the light went forth, he had decided on redemption, and he will not turn from it.
amazing. It is amazing. So don't tell me there's no grace in the Old Testament. Right. Now, Linda, right. you had a comment. No, I am just going to say you threw so much stuff at us this week that it's going to take a little while for us to... I threw out a few bricks. Well, which I'm are just the saying it's going to take a while for us to... Which are the foundation upon which the story of Abraham will be built. Well, yeah. And they'll, they'll, come, and they'll come back to haunt us and bless us both. Trust me on this point. Okay? All right. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity that you've given us to have your word open among us and between us. We ask that your spirit, in that still small voice for revelation, will, will, will portion and parcel this word so that it is available to every seeking heart, that it would bless it, that it would edify it, and that it would reveal you to those who are seeking that very thing, the presence of your Holy Spirit in their life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.